Greetings, 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 family. Tai Chi 360 family, soul group. Yep. Let's go. Let's flow, let's flow, let's flow. Yep. Love is in the air. I see hearts. I see hearts. Hearts on the screen. Love is in the air. I should design this myself. I should design this. Come on in, fam. Welcome back. Flexible strength. Here we go. How's everybody feeling today? Greetings, Brother Tristan. Looking forward to our private session today. Sister Megan, you and I have to get a reschedule done for the private. Let's do that today. Let's get that reschedule taken care of. Let's do that today. Check in with me, family. How y'all doing today? How's everybody feeling? Feeling pretty good, physically, mentally? Emotionally, Sister Kim, good to see you today. Definitely held space for your father, held some space for your father and uh, sent some intention his way. Nursing a little headache today, Sister Audrey. Hmm. So sorry to hear that. Get some liquids going, lots of deep breaths going. Immerse yourself in some love. You you know you know the recipe. You know the recipe. Heartache. Mmm. A real heartache. Huh. We should talk about that. A little. A little broken hearted. Let's come on and let's work through it, Audrey. You know that, baby. We can't stay there. You gotta go right through it. Gotta go right through it. That's part of the journey. We know those emotions come, right? They come and they, they go. We just, we just have to experience them. Don't hold on to them. We are definitely here to experience all emotions, all of them, including the heartbreak as well sadness happiness we should experience every bit of it going through going through heartbreaks actually teaches us how to love more not saying that we want to reside in a state of being heartbroken
But definitely all of those emotions are here for us to experience. Hey, let's go. We got, uh, look like we got 11 people here. 11 family members here ready to take flight. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's go. Let's get some movement going. Um, before we get started, if you have your Tai Chi ball around, go ahead and get those. We're going to play some um, teacup today for sure. Hey, hey, so group. Sister Pam is here. South Carolina is here. Brother Swinton is here. Gerard. Good to see you, my brother. Long tendon, long life. Any, anybody ever heard that ancient Chinese proverb? Long tendons, long life. Have you heard that before? I think I might have mentioned it at least once before. Long tendons, long life. Long tendons, long life. That's, that's, that's what the flexible strength, that's what flexible strength is inspired upon. Because with age, with age, most of us seem to be at least in our 20s here, right? Our tendons, Specifically, ligaments, they start to retract, get a little shorter. So a lot of times, people think that it's their muscles that's tight. That's true. But, oftentimes, it's not only tight muscles, tendons and ligaments all of the soft tissues in the body begin to retract as we get a little older. <clears throat> and if we don't take, <laughs> if we don't take responsibility of our health, now, later, life could be pretty rough. Life could be pretty disastrous when we're not able to feel and be inside of our body. I don't want nothing to do with that personally. I don't want anything to do with that. So here, let's go. Let's be, go ahead and settle down. So although we're doing uh, physical, somewhat physical training, you know, not so meditative, we still want to remain or maintain a pretty calm mind, pretty calm breath, you know, um, being centered, centering the thoughts, being here and now, all, all of those same same qualities, same attributes we want to bring into this training as well. So it's not just haphazardly throwing our body around. Mindfulness, following the breath, all of those same things. So let's go ahead and get into it, fam. Take a deep breath out, out. Not in, out. And then inhale. Then inhale. So we begin with a contraction and then go into an expansion. Contraction and then expansion. Exhale and then inhale. This is the salute. This is the how are you today. This is the big embrace of the universe. Soft fist with the left hand. Sun and moon covered by the shield. Breathe in on the way up. Somebody said they're feeling a little sore, a little stiff today. A lot of somebodies. <laughs> I certainly understand that. I certainly understand that, fam. We're going to go right on outside the gate, beginning with... You got it. Three rotations. You guessed it perfectly. Beginning on the... Left side. That's it. You got it. Starting to memorize it. Starting to memorize it. Chain size. 
in the nose and out of the right in the nose out the nose nostril breathing all right somebody's been listening to me i hadn't been talking to myself chain sides second set second set of three when you're alone you can do six nine twelve eighteen whatever whatever your heart desires we just do a little bit of everything a little bit of this a little bit of that when you're alone you can really focus in on doing less but doing more of that particular exercise so do fewer exercises but do those exercises in higher repetition when you're alone last set of three for example when I'm alone doing my shoulder rotations I may do six or nine as opposed to three sets of three I may do three sets of six or three sets of nine whatever you have to find your personal routine and just work it. The key is, or one of the keys, one of the primary keys is to have a daily, daily routine. Not every other day, rotate both shoulders forward. Not every other day, but every single day. For me, I like to begin my day with my exercise it sets the tone for the rest of the day puts me in a good mood right away sets my whole day in motion typically i'm doing my training 3 30 a.m five o'clock a.m early somewhere around those wee hours in the morning I like to get it started and that's just my personal preference because I am a early 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 bird that's me later in the day I'm pretty much shot I have no desire to do any type of exercise in the evenings I just want to see my pillow that's it so I sleep early I wake early seven o'clock in the afternoon I'm asleep man I may wake up again but yeah my routine is pretty funny I sleep real early now we're going to do um, big circles with the arms here so inhale lifting you know the bear swimming exercise right right so get you a full range of motion circle those shoulders breathe in I'll keep talking as we go uh, I had a couple people interested in learning more in regards to uh, Chinese medicine and I'm certainly not a resource for that there are people out there who specialize in the field and there is quite a few people out there the resources are abundant but I am not one of those resources I only know a few things here and there if you're interested in learning the intricate details of Chinese medicine I actually have a couple people that I can recommend but I only know that they have a lot of knowledge I have no idea as to how they teach, if you like them as a teacher, their personality, I don't know any of that. I only know that they teach Chinese medicine and that's about it. But Lester does not specialize in Chinese medicine. Those people who specialize in Chinese medicine, they oftentimes send me students who want to study Tai Chi. And I send them people who want to learn Chinese medicine.
bare swim. So this is a breath in, this is a breath out. Anybody having any shoulder issues, this should help us with our range of motion. And it's simple motion. Just work in the full range, the best to your ability and don't overdo it, don't overstretch yourself. Use your breath and no force. So inhale and then exhale. You may or may not be able to notice, but my whole body is actually involved in this movement, not just my arms. As I exhale, my body begins to sink and move to the rear, moving to my heels. As I inhale, my body begins to rise and move forward to the balls of my feet. We'll do one more. So there's a rising and falling. There's a slight shifting forward and a slight shifting to the rear. So here, let's change that exercise. Look at how I changed that. Still flowing, family. Did you notice that? Never stopped. Found the circle and flowed right back into the other direction. Eagle soars. Eagle soars. Here, we imagine that we have developed the wings of an eagle, our arms spread out wide. We soar very high. We found some prey, something below, and then we begin to come down. Our fingers tighten as if they become the talons and the claws of an eagle to grasp the prey. And then we release the tension and we take flight again. So breathe your natural, your natural rate of respiration. So in other words, your motion and your movement may not be the same as mine. It's not expected to be because your movement and your breath should be in unison. Okay, so as you inhale, not necessarily when, it, when I inhale, but as you inhale and feel your lungs to capacity, you rise up. As you exhale and sink down, you let the body go down naturally according to your breathing rhythm. Don't forget to make the claws very tight. Exercising the fingers, the hands, the arms, and then release, inhale all the way up. Soar high in the clouds. Very good. Settling down. Inhale, come back to center. Come back to center. Let's do a Tai Chi posture, Tai Chi preparatory move here. We call this preparation. So we're breathing in and out with a slight upward and downward, like bobbing in the water, like a flotation device that just bobs on top of the water, kind of just hanging out, floating. Feel your tailbone, feel your crown point, feel inside of your body, every little thing Feel the bottom of your feet resting upon the earth's surface softly. Feel your toes, they're spread open, they're not gripping the floor. Very good. Couple more, just focusing on nice, deep, diaphragmatic breathing. Make sure that your breath is inaudible, meaning that you cannot hear your breath. The only time you should hear your breath is when we are making some type of breathing sound that has an intentional audible sound. Other than that, unless you have some type of nasal um, deviated septum or some type of mucus buildup, something that's restricting your breath, the breath should not be heard. It should be very silent. 
Okay, very good. Now, like a tree in the wind, like a tree in the wind. I need a little cushion here. Like a tree in the wind. I only put this down here for, um, to give me some cushion. Also, I don't like standing on these uh, tiles so much because they absorb the weather, they absorb the temperature. My feet like to be warm. With that being said, you probably can't see my feet because I have on black socks. But, let me give you my shoe demonstration. We're getting ready to open our ankles. We're getting ready to open the ankle joints. So we're standing as such, right? Our feet. We're going to be turning our ankles over on the side. So outside ankle, inside ankle. We're going to roll over simultaneously. So we're intentionally rolling our ankle over from side to side going very very slow feeling each and every subtlety throughout the range of motion okay now our ankles have very small joints inside very small bones excuse me very similar to the construction of the wrist but different different area different function so our ankles serve as not only a device that helps us to flex, but also it gives us sideways flexion as well. Similar to the shocks on a vehicle, you know, they take the shock from our body, they absorb it. A lot of people store that shock inside of the joint. So if you from time to time just begin to practice rolling over you can't see my feet I'll, I'll just suck it up you can see my feet now these tiles are not forgiving they're very <laughs> though you know our ankles are bones right so bear with me here as I suffer through the the pain for you family inside outside as you come upon the size of your ankle hang out for a second and breathe through get as get as relaxed as you can relax the shoulders I mean, the shoulders want to raise up relax the shoulders relax the legs and just breathe through it a little bit lengthening the tendons the ligaments just a little bit throughout the whole body we want to come in touch with every single joint in our body oftentimes we neglect our feet we don't pay our feet attention unless we stub our toe right hit your toe and oh wow now you pay attention to your feet usually most people they don't pay their feet any attention put your shoes on and keep going give your feet a little love every day fam you'll be surprised when you able to get rid of the tension tension down below it unravels the tension in our whole body because our whole body is connected. Pull a thread here and it pulls here, right? In my shirt, if I pull a thread here, it pulls here. The body is the same way. The whole body is connected to some degree. So start with your feet. It's rooted in the feet. You heard that before, right? Tai Chi people, it's rooted in the feet. It should be. But if our ankles are frozen, we're cut off from our root. We're cut off right at the ankles. You get what I'm saying? That makes sense to you. Let's do three rotations on both sides. Three times. This is the second time on this side for me. And a few breaths through. And just holding it for a couple seconds. Full breath. There's no rush. We're loving ourselves right now. There's nothing more important 
than taking care of these bodies that we have because when they're gone, they're gone, fam. When we learn to love ourselves, we attract love. When we become love, we attract love. How can we become love? Well, we have to love ourselves. <laughs> it's real simple. It's real simple. One more time on the other side. You guys hear me talking about self-love and why it's so important and know thyself. You know, know thyself is the conscious part. But did anybody tell you that we should also not only know ourselves, we should love ourselves? That's the second part. We can know, just knowing is not enough. <laughs> knowing is not enough. Okay, come back to center now. Come back to center. Let's keep working down below. We're down below. Let's keep working down there since we're down there already. So we're going to inhale. Look at my wrist. Check my wrist. We're going to inhale, come up on the balls of the feet and we're going to flex the wrists at the same time. Also our calf muscles are contracting. Bring the contraction up to your thighs, your quadriceps. Contract the whole part of your lower body and then come down very slow. Relax the wrists, straighten the hand. Come down real slow. Now this is the challenge. Pull your toes up, make a fist, come up on the heel. See how I kind of rock back a little bit? That's fine. Focus on being very steady, very steady. All right, and then come back up. Do it according to your own will. Go slow. Here, contract the muscles. This is a good exercise for the muscles. Contracting the calves, contracting the hamstrings, contracting the quadriceps, flexing the wrists, and then coming down real slow. And then the wrist is beginning to relax and the flat hand is becoming a fist. I'm beginning to put my feet down flat on the ground, but also beginning to slowly but surely pick my toes up, rolling back on the heels and making a fist. Focus on something and see if you can maintain your balance without falling backwards. Give it a go. I'm going for it again. I'm going for it again. There it is right there. I got it. And just hold it for a second, three times. Back to the front again, last time, slow. When you, when you go back to your heels, yeah, you're gonna be a little off balance, but pay close attention and your balance will get better. Your balance will get better. Find a focus point. Find a focusing point. Find a focus point that's in front of you, not down on the ground straight out somewhere and focus on that. Go slow, you know the process here. Making a fist, placing the feet down softly, feeling the entire bottom of your foot, shifting back to the heel. Now you know the challenging point, so focus. Focus. There we go. Got it, I did better that time. I did better that time. Okay, center. Inhale, Tai Chi movement as the arms float up like in water. Let the arms float up. Let the energy extend to the fingertips. Do it with your mind and out the fingertips. 
And when it's almost dissipated, once the energy is almost gone, bring it back in. Bring it back in. If you have any type of circulation problems or challenges, I'd like to say, use your vision, your imagination. Visualize that the energy is not stagnant, but actually moving all the way through to the tips of your fingers, to the tips of your toes. Release the energy from the tips of the fingers, from the tips of the toes. Right. You'll begin to notice that you'll start restoring your circulation. You'll start restoring your circulation, your ability to move the energy because you're using your mind now. Here we go, inhale up. Get a few of these in. So what, as I come up, my weight, my body mass has shifted to the front of my foot, the front portion. The heels are still down, but there's a very little weight there. As I inhale and begin to retract the arms, my body is now beginning to float back to my heels. The energy is coming in and through my body. Energy is there, family. You just can't see it. There's a lot of things in the atmosphere that we are not equipped to see with our normal eyes. It's just too much. Too much going on out there. Inhale. Pull it in. Exhale, last one, all the way down, all the way down. Inhale this time, all the way up. Tai Chi balls between my palms. Inhale, present it to the sky, the Tai Chi ball, stretch it up. Let your spine, let your spine, the vertebrae in between, take your time and feel those vertebrae open. Go inside your body and do it. Yeah. Don't question it. It's your body. There's no limitation, fam. Limitation comes from the mind. Okay, now here. I'm turning to my right this time. Just to do it a little differently. Right side. Now. Tai Chi ball gets heavy and begins to fall. I'm guiding it. I'm holding on to it very softly I'm not gonna go so deep on this first one I'm taking my time turn the ball inhale coming up go soft go very soft inhale you'll notice when you're breathing completely the movement of your body begins to become a lot more efficient and your range of motion begins to increase because the muscles are not tense. When the muscles are tense, tension brings restriction. Tension brings restriction. It restricts the movement. The breath helps take away the tension. Last one, this is three. Exhale, the palms are directly across from each other. Directly across from each other. Exhale out. Inhale up. All the way up. That was three, let's turn back the other way. Now, as I said before, you can do more by yourself. Exhale. Now, when you do it, don't turn it into just a physical exercise. Still use your mindfulness, connecting the breath with the movement. Always exercise those things. Connecting the mind with the movement. 
the breath with the movement. Always exercise those things, those qualities. Bring those qualities into your personal practice. And don't just start going fast and moving haphazardly because then you just turn it into a regular physical exercise. Now, if that's all you're looking for, that's fine. But there's a lot of regular physical exercises that you could do. You don't have to do this. This is number three. Hamstrings, lower back. Okay, that's three. Exhale down. You got your teacups around? You got your teacups around, fam? I got mine. I'm going to use these today. Go ahead and get your whatever you use, and you can use rocks. Be careful with the rocks. Don't let them fall and hit you in the head. You can use teacups, anything. Whatever. Let's go. I'm just getting a little sip here. Yeah, we're taking it easy, fam. We're just flowing right through it. Unwinding. Unwinding. Actually, Jeremy, I have a nice oriental rug. A beautiful Tai Chi rug. My wife won't allow me to put it on the floor because the cat, the cat scratches it. Not this cat. This cat never moves. <laughs> My other cat. She scratches it. Here we go. Maybe I'll show you the rug one day. Nice, nice Tai Chi rug. Get your Tai Chi balls out. We'll go out to the front corner first. This is this is my right hand. I know it's opposite for you on the view, but this is the right hand going over to the left 45 degree corner. So I always make this representation that we are standing in the center, in the center of a square, right? So we got a corner here, a corner here, a corner here, a corner here. Use that to help you as a uh, for directional purposes. It'll help you. Center of a square. So this is to the front uh, left corner. Diagonal. Right? And now, turning back, turning back. I'm making it a really big movement. Way back. This is to the uh, right rear corner. But it doesn't stop there. It circles around and goes back to my uh, left rear corner. I'll do it one more time. That was making the movement very large. So let's say that your range of motion in your shoulder is not as, um, I'll say not as big or not as, uh, not as, your shoulder's not as forgiving as mine. Let's say that. You have a limited range of motion. We all have a limited range of motion compared to something. So here's a shorter range of motion. Not as large, see? You can just come here, which is fine. We should all go there. Right? Same motion, but just made smaller. This is larger. Make it as large as you can. I like to make it large, I like to make it small. I like to do both. I'll make it small again. Now remember I said don't grip the ball with your fingers. Allow the ball to rest naturally on your palm. It's just sitting there. If it falls, that's cool. Pick it back up. Find out why did it fall. How can you adjust your body for it not to fall? And later, it won't fall as often. 
That's just the way it works. All right, your body starts to learn and adapt. Let's go one more. I'll go small. I find small to be more challenging, actually. Just like doing a small frame um, Tai Chi form. Smaller is more challenging. I change size on you, fam. From left to right. From right back over here to the left front. Back to the left rear. From the left rear to the right rear. This is big. Across the top. This is large. My shoulders are pretty open. I work on my shoulders quite a bit. I work on the shoulders quite a bit. I want you all to be just as flexible, if not more flexible than I am. Now I'm going small with it. Same thing. I just make it small. From small, go right into big. So I'm alternating large and small. Choose yours, fam. Choose what you want to go with. Don't grip the ball. Don't grip it. When you go large, get a little lean back in there. It'll help you. Also, push your wrists and your palm up towards the sky. The palm. So here, if I push my palm up more, it helps me to have a full range of motion without gripping. See, I'm pushing up. See, I don't need to grip it. For what? It rests there by itself. I'm going right into large. Palm up. I'm guarantee you, if you focus on palm up, you'll get, you'll get it, fam. And you won't drop it. Palm up. Last one. Small and big. I'm going small. And then I'm going large. I'm going right into it. Without stopping. You see that? Combine large and small. Nice, huh? Here now. Let's do both together. Both in one side, right side first. The in, out, in, around, palms up. In, out, back in, and out. Palms up. I imagine that my wrists are actually connected together. Both wrists tied together here. So the hands have to work in unison. Last one. So we went this way. Let's go this way. In. In on the left, around and out. So back in on the left. Around. See my body moving? Look at that spine moving. Tailbone moving. Pelvis moving. Spine is so happy. My spine loves me. Chiropractor, not so much. Don't need a chiropractor. Don't need those adjustments. I make my own adjustments. Sorry to my chiropractor friends, but I don't need you. I love you. But I do my own adjustments. Just by moving. I told you I had an injured back back in the day, right? L2 and L3. I fixed my own back family. 
from standing still and moving properly in the Tai Chi form. Herniated disc, L2, L3, no longer exists. Fixed. Last one. Okay, good. Put these away. Give me some quick feedback. Quick feedback on the teacups. How y'all do with the teacups? Yes, wrist together. How's y'all do with the teacups? Lynn says, Qigong. To me, you can't have Tai Chi without Qigong family. They come together. You can't have one without the other. Movement and breath. Mindfulness. Can't have it. Love those. All right. Let's do this one, family. You missed out on this one yesterday, the day before. You missed out on this one. We want to keep it going. We want to keep it going. If we do it every day, it's better. Doing it with two is usually a little bit more of a challenge. Lynn fixed herself with Qigong and Tai Chi. There's another testimony. There's another testimony. Get you a towel or something out, family. <laughs> oh, I like that, Nancy. Nancy said, give it a go with red wine. Red wine in your cup on a white rug and you'll start and you'll get it together real quick you right about that because you don't want to drop that red wine get a towel or something family i am a swimming dragon lynn you should see me when i start moving i'm a swimming dragon we come in here knife cuts through we don't if you don't need the towel if you can do this without the towel, perfect. This one is called Knife Cuts Through. If you cannot do that at this moment, you will be able to do it later. Get a towel or a stick. Put it in between hands and join it together. Say, for example, you're this far away, right? Okay, start inching up on the towel. Start inching up on the towel, inching up, inching up. Eventually, you're going to get closer and closer together. And then soon, you're going to throw the towel away. You won't need it anymore. Because you'll be able to do just this. This one is called Knife Cuts Through. We're going to make sure we do it more regularly. Let's do it now. Feel how this exercise engages parts of your body that you didn't even know existed. <laughs> Knife cuts through, family. This is a game changer. This is one of the foundational exercises of flexible strength, right here. Right here. Inhale, turn, away. Exhale coming across and down. The elbow is leading as if the elbow is your hand reaching out towards your toe. Inhale, come up. We did six on uh, one day. I forget which day it was. Nine is a good number. Let's do nine, family. That's one. Two. It's a breath in on the way up. This is three. This is four, breathe out. In on the way up.
your legs are straight, right? The knees, the, your knees should be straight. Not locked, but straight. If not, you're not, you're not doing the exercise to its full capacity. It's better to have the legs straight and not bend down as far so that you can engage the hamstrings. Last one for me. Straighten the legs, engage the hamstrings. Release. Opposite side now. Opposite side now. So on this one, we'll notice that one side will be better. Possibly. I notice in myself that the range of motion is more limited on one side than the other. I'm right hand dominant. So my right hand, right, my right arm has more stiffness than my left. So I use my other hand to help place this one. And it's a little bit more of a struggle, but I get it. I get it eventually. Got it. Got it right there. Got it. You guys got it? A little bit more of a struggle for me on that side. Both sides used to be that way. They were worse than that actually in the beginning. All right, let's go. Nine. Breathe in on the way up. Lead with the elbow. Now you know your body, if your shoulders are limited, don't stress yourself, don't go too far, don't force it. Don't cause yourself to hurt yourself, it's not worth that. Don't do that fam. Use a towel if you have to. Eventually the body will soften and allow you to do more. And notice I'm not doing a real fast jerky movement that's depending on momentum. Don't depend on momentum. I believe this is the last one. Okay, good, release. Shake your arms out a little bit. Shake your arms out a little bit. Neck rolls, family. That, that builds up a little tension in here. That exercise, you may feel a little tension in here. So let's, let's loosen that up a little bit. Let's loosen that up. We inhale up. Semicircle. Exhale around. Inhale up. Exhale around. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale up. Change the circle, the semicircle. Make sure it's a semicircle and not a full circle. Semicircle, not a full circle. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale out. Inhale up. Exhale out. Inhale, let the head hang back. Just hang, let it hang here.
forward. Bring your chin towards your chest. Let it hang, just hanging. Make an effort to bring your chin in towards your chest. Concave the chest. Inhale up. Hang once more, just hanging. You'll get a nice natural release. Exhale down. Let it go, just let it go naturally. Okay, come to center now. Bring your, your left ear down to your left shoulder. Don't pick the shoulder up. Don't pick the shoulder up to meet it. Actually take the shoulder away and take the ear down. They're going in the same direction. Both going down. You're gonna feel this side lengthen. You feel this lengthen here, the trapezius muscles lengthening. That's what you want, fam. That's what you want. Okay, let's do both sides. We certainly can't do just one side. Elbow down, shoulder down, fingers down. Ear goes down towards the shoulder. As if it's following the shoulder down. Exactly. Yeah, big hip circles. It's almost time to clock out. Almost time to clock out. I want to make sure I touch a couple more, couple more joints before we leave. So now you're starting to add these exercises to your toolbox, right? Right? Right. So take them with you outside of our meeting. Yeah, use them. And then that way you can get in more repetition, more frequency. And then you'll get more benefit. Here, you get a change of circle. Here, I'm gonna continue to give you guidance and instruction to make the exercise better and periodically add a new exercise. But I want you to train it on your own so that you can get more benefits, Sam. We grow together, no doubt about that. You know you can't get out of here without us doing our hamstrings, right? We gotta do some hamstring work, fam. I think the cow, cow turns his head the cow turns his head and looks at his tail. We hadn't done that one in a while. Let's do that. And then we'll call it a uh, conclusion. Hmm? Okay, that's a bad deal. I'm cool with that. So there's a little squatting action going on. Let me take my glasses off. Without my glasses, my, my vision is... Uh, very limited so I'm always squinting and I like to wear my glasses so I don't have to squint as much squinting means I'm focusing I'm trying to force myself to see it's not good but anyway I trust that you're still there although I can't see you <laughs> I feel you so here we go let's take a couple breaths and then Kyle turns his head and we'll conclude until later today Inhale, last exercise coming up. So cow turns his head to look at his tail or her tail. Is dealing with our spine, our head, our hamstrings, lower back. All of those things are coming into play. So, hmm, I don't think I need to mention that it's a very important exercise to help free free up the range of motion inside of those joints. So exhale down here. 
Now here I want you to straighten the legs, but don't hyperextend the knees, all right? Now, if you're unable to bend down and touch the ground, it's fine. You don't have to. You don't have to. You just do what you can. Bend down as far as you can. What's important is these legs are straight and these hamstrings are getting connected. When the hamstrings connect, they're connecting the other parts of my body. But if my knees are bent, I just broke the connection. Right? Now you can feel that the body's connected. So once you find your depth, how far you're able to bend down, we're going to inhale. Just follow me for a second. Listen. Head down, head up, inhale. Turn and look at your tail. Head in, head up turn so I'm turning my butt towards the same side that I'm looking at and then back to center got it so as I turn my head this way I'm turning my rear end to the same side of course it's not going to be a huge turn because we have a limited range of motion in the lower back but we're freeing the lower back also there's a healing sound the biting the air, we can engage that here as well. Here we go, I'll show you how it works. So, I look back behind myself, between my legs, inhale up. I turn my head. Got it? Let's do it together before I wear myself out. We're all going to do it. Let's go. I'll turn sideways so you can see me. So down the middle is an exhale. Up. It's an inhale. Turn my tail. Rotating my head. Couple more, we're almost finished. If you need to bow out, I understand. Last one. And these end with a squat. These end with a squat. Deep squat, deep squat. If you can, inside of your inside of your knees, inside of the knees. When you're getting ready to get up, palms on the floor, roll forward, push your tail in, your butt up to the sky, up to the sky. Balls of the feet, heels. Balls of the feet, heels. Balls of the feet, heels. Okay, reach out towards me and we're going home, fam. 
reach out towards me. Carry it all the way up. All the way. Carry moon. Come up. All right. Thank you all. We went over a little bit today. That's a bow out. Thank you. We went over a little bit. Exhale. Center yourself. Thank you, Tai Chi family. Thank you all. Heart to heart. Thank you very much. Heart to heart. Embrace, hug, distal hug, digital, virtual hug. Always, always do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tachi family. That was good. We got another wonderful, another wonderful flexible strength gathering together today. That was good. Absolutely. What time is it? I went over a little bit, huh? Not too much. A couple minutes. For some good exercise for life, why not? Couple minutes. I didn't read the read the uh, the live stream. I didn't read the live stream because uh, busy busy putting in work. So I just took it for granted that everybody's feeling good today and doing good, doing the best we can. Of course, we're all, we all got something going on in our life, no matter what. Or we wouldn't be here in this, in this existence, right? Everybody's got some issue going on. That's for sure. Everybody got something going on. Not necessarily something bad. I didn't say that. But we all have some type of issues in our life. All right? I got a lot of issues in my life right now. A lot of them are super fantastic, great. I'm glad you all enjoyed the lesson, Nancy. And thank you, Lynn. Lynn Marie. Lynn Marie. Thank you for being here, my friend. Absolutely happy to have you. I enjoy the group energy that we have here in our Tai Chi 360 group. I enjoy the energy. If anyone here is not a member of our, uh, if you're not a member of our Tai Chi 360 online group, Facebook group, go ahead and send me an invitation. I've been doing my best to keep it pretty limited to family. Not so many just open invitations to people that I don't know. Because this, this group has a different intention. I want to grow from the inside out. To grow from the inside out. That where we have closer relationship. Because we kind of get to know each other. Or we know somebody who knows somebody. That way we don't get a lot of the, the trolls and, you know, you deal with, trust me, family, you all may not know it. You all may not know it, but I tell you what, the social media world, 
the social media world and if if you're putting yourself out there like I have been over the last over the, in, in the social media world I started back in 2012 I've been doing social media since 2012 and I tell you what you meet a lot of <laughs> Ooh, challenging individuals out there, you know, all kind of different personality types. So it's a challenge being out here, you know, sharing the arts in the social media world. It's pretty funny. You get all kind of people, people who people who really don't know anything about the arts. And I, I was one of those people at one time, too. But, you know, one thing I, I never did, I never went, I never used my time to go to anyone else's page and to promote anything negative about that person or to talk against a person who's out there, you know, trying to put out the art. But you get people, trolls, who go around and they, they put down other people's work and they do all kind of stuff. It's amazing. And what really was surprising to me is a lot of so-called Tai Chi people, they do the same thing. They go around and they talk talk about people's art and downplay people and they never give any uplift. It's pretty depressing out there sometimes. So I just say that if you choose to ever get out and start promoting your stuff, just know what you're dealing with. Know that that energy is out there. It's not all love out there. Like, you know, I always talk about love and all that. Not many people doing that, family. Not many people doing that. People want to compete. They see you as being a threat, so they want to compete with you. And I'm not here to compete with anybody or to convince anybody of anything. That's not my mission at all. That is not my mission. I have no time for that. I'm not here to convince anyone of anything. I'm already convinced. I'm convinced already. I'm just here to connect with like-minded individuals, like-minded people such as ourselves. That's it. It's funny. Uh, I put out my Tai Chi 360 video explaining what Tai Chi 360 is all about. And Tai Chi 360 is simply my dream, my dream of how I would like to help contribute to the Tai Chi world. That's all it is. And my dream has always been to, first and foremost, have a real community, right? Come together as individuals, come together, community. That's been my dream forever. I never knew that it would be done through Tai Chi, but I always wanted to bridge. I call it bridging the gap, you know, bridging the gap in humanity, bringing the young and old together, the young and not so old together, you know, the tribe, the tribe mentality, that's always what I wanted to see happen again. And then I never expected to come through Tai Chi. I didn't know how it would come. And lo and behold, here is Tai Chi, the perfect segue, the perfect way to actually bring young and perfect for me to bring the old, the unification of all generations, the generational gap. I said, wow, Tai Chi is a way to do that. So here's my Tai Chi 360. Um, thought, right? People are calling me a charlatan. <laughs> People are calling me a cultist, saying I'm run, I'm develop, I develop a cult. I'm like, whoa, a cult? I never recreated any forms, Tai Chi forms. I still use the same Tai Chi forms that was passed on to me. So what I did do with Tai Chi 360 is I found a way to, or it found me. I didn't find a way. Tai Chi, if you know Tai Chi from a martial arts standpoint, you know that in China, during the warring times, the feuding times, um, you had um, soldiers, right? Foot soldiers, but you also had soldiers on horse, horseback. So basically, if... If you were a foot soldier, you knew that if you went to the ground, if you fell down in battle, 
more than likely you are going to end up in trouble, probably end up dead. So the Chinese martial arts generally did not specialize in fighting or defense on the ground. They didn't specialize in ground defense. That just wasn't part of their thinking. They didn't see it as being um, an essential part of the training because if you went down, a, a horseback, a, a mounted soldier on a horseback comes through, they trample right over you. They ride right over you or they come by and they cut your head off, right? So my Sifu, Ron Hoffman, he, he pointed out to me himself and he's known for being a pugilist, a pugilist, a fighter, a Tai Chi fighter. He's one of the few. I am not one of the few. My Sifu is, right? He told me that he found a gap, a gap in the teachings. In other words, he said that Tai Chi is not dead and it needs to continuously evolve with humanity. So humanity has evolved into, if you look at the way that most street conflicts take place, and I'm talking to my martial artists and anyone, anyone that's interested in self-defense. You will notice that a lot of the confrontations, it doesn't take long before someone grabs somebody and the confrontation goes to the ground, right? That's just the way it is in these current days and times. So Sifu noticed that Tai Chi people were not able to survive and himself included. He said it. He told me, he said, if I go to the ground, I'm done. He told me if I go to the ground, I'm done or I'm going to have a hard time. He said, because the ground is a totally different environment. And a lot of Tai Chi people, they just they're living in a world where they think that because they learn stand up. And they learn their Tai Chi standing up that those qualities are going to transfer directly onto the ground. And that is so far from the truth. They just have not met an, a ground expert. I'm being honest with you, family. I put myself out here and I have met some experts and on the ground. It's like a fish being out of water, family. You will get swallowed. If you do not understand and feel comfortable, first of all, being on the ground. So this is where Tai Chi 360 has brought in the ground world. The defense on the ground. That's the only thing that, that I've added. That's it. Now, that's a whole lot of information and it's not coming from me, but it's coming from specialists who work in those areas who just happen to find me because they want to learn Tai Chi. So I'm teaching these ground fighters, these UFC experts. I have a couple of veteran UFC guys who know how to fight on the ground, but they don't know Tai Chi. So they're teaching me the world of the ground. At the same time, I'm coming onto the ground as a Tai Chi person, right? So I'm bringing my Tai Chi skills into their world and they're being very kind to me. Don't get me wrong because they would swallow me up on the ground, spit me out. But we're going slow and they're teaching me how to work on the ground. Is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not, because now I'm learning how to use my Tai Chi on the ground. This is Tai Chi 360, so it's not only standing. It's, on, it's not only um, health and healing and, and, and meditation. It's a complete circle. Now we're covering the groundwork. It's gone to me. It's gone to another level now. And I'm working with people who are soft, kind and gentle and they're experts in their field and they know how to teach this stuff. And I now I'm teaching them Tai Chi as well. To me, that is like. That's a trifecta. That is perfection it has nothing to do with anybody recreating anything. I never recreated anything. What we did is we brought the arts together. See, people are not used to seeing Tai Chi people getting along with MMA people. It usually doesn't happen. They usually fight against each other and they talk about 
my art is better than your art and my art is better than your art. See, because of because I am love, because I love myself, I attract love. Because I am love and I love myself to a high level, my beacon signal is love. You get what I'm saying? So I attract love. So I've met some lovely MMA fighters, believe it or not. Lovely. These guys train yoga, meditation. How often do you meet people like that? You guys saw Marcus, right? Marcus Brigham. Right. So Marcus, I'll give you a quick background on Marcus, very quick. Well, he, um, if you know Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor's first UFC fight was against Marcus. He beat Marcus. He beat Marcus. Yeah, he beat Marcus. No doubt about it. Marcus was a straight moving, just straight in fighter. And he was basically, to me, looking back at him, he was a sitting target because you knew exactly what he was going to do. He was going to come in straight. He was going to try to use force and power to overtake you. And Connor doesn't fight that way. He's a Connor fights like an animal. You know, his his skills and his movement is more animalistic. It's not so linear. Right. So now Marcus has turned into a completely different fighter because of his Tai Chi. And it's only been a few months. Wait till about three years of training with me. He's going to be a completely different being. Then we're going to compare how he was fighting then and how he fights now. And then we may have a surprise for the world. We're taking our time right now. We're taking our time. And when the time is right, there may be a surprise coming out from Tai Chi 360. He's not the only one. I got one more, but I'm keeping that name. I'm keeping that name quiet right now because he is our he's our project. He's our. <laughs> yeah. We're just keeping it quiet right now, keeping it under wraps. So we got some things that we're working on. I love the martial arts. I love Tai Chi. I love the health as wealth. I love the Tai Chi 360 community. We we help people who are barely able to move. You know, I love helping senior citizens who can barely stand up and walk. I love helping the young who love to do martial arts. I love those who are in their mid age, such as you and I, who love to be healthy, who also want to be able to defend ourselves if we need to. We should be able to defend ourselves. That's just natural, right? We should be able to defend ourselves. We should be able to walk away from our car, from the grocery store, and go home safely to our families. We all deserve that. And that's all I want to offer the community family, a way to do that, to be healthy, mind, body, and soul. Yeah, it was pretty funny to hear people say I've created, I've, I created a cult. They're saying I created a cult. These people, man, they really don't get it, family. Exactly. See, Nancy says some fighters who prefer, there's many fighters who prefer the ground because they know that a lot of fighters cannot function there. And that is very true. I'm training a guy right now. He wants to be on the ground. He's going to do everything in his possibility to get you on the ground. And he's an animal on the ground, a complete animal on the ground. Now, the challenge is teaching him Tai Chi now. That's the challenge because their mindset is. Arr! So now I've got to teach him how to calm down and how to work from a different engine, a different mentality. So that's the challenge that I'm having teaching these guys with the fighting background. And it's a fun challenge. It's a fun challenge. I mean, you look at these guys, their ears are all busted up. You know how to get those big cauliflower ears? That tells you these guys have put in a lot of hours. They're on the ground for thousands of hours. So they want to be on the ground. They love it on the ground. I'm having fun on the ground at my age right now. 48 years old. Being on the ground is helping my flexibility. It's fun. We're not hurting each other. I'm not going in the ring anywhere, but I do want to learn what my Sifu set out to learn. Actually, before my Sifu died, before he left his plane, he was learning how to fight on the ground. My Sifu actually broke his neck. Yep. He broke his neck attempting to learn how to fight on the ground. 
A lot of people didn't know that. But if you look at his posture in the last days in the videos, you'll see that his neck is a little bit, the way that he, his mannerisms and the way that he move his neck, you can tell that he, something's going on. But a lot of people don't know that. Anyway, here we are. And no, I do not lead a cult. <laughs> Jeremy. <sighs> Jeremy says, let's all chip in and buy the <laughs> Oh Man, you're talking about a cult, man. They'll be they'll be outside my door. Hey Gary, you're not too old, bro. You can do it at any age. Any age, and that's a fact. Yeah, I'm forty eight. I'm 48. He says, let's all pitch in and buy a C4 Rolls Royce. <laughs> oh, man. You talking about a cult. They'll have me signed up on the world's worst cultists. That's funny. Hey, Nancy. I just teach them. Tai if, if I can just teach them Tai Chi. Nepture 69. Hey, we all 72. Nancy says she's 72 and she can hold her own. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Nancy, I'll be honest with you. The way that I learned Tai Chi, the way that I learned Tai Chi and use my Tai Chi, the joint locks, the grips, that stuff happened pretty naturally. It happens pretty naturally just by sticking. Just by sticking, I notice that the people end up in locks. It just happens naturally. It's pretty amazing, pretty phenomenal. I never train joint locks independently. They just, they just happen. It's, re it's really weird, man. The Tai Chi, I'll tell you what, from my experience, and I've been, I've been, I've been in some real world experiences. This is what made me realize that my Tai Chi did work. I've been in some real world, nothing to brag about, because I'm not a fighter, right? But I do believe in being safe. I, I do bodyguard work. I do uh, security work. And um, I've actually been attacked before, been attacked by um, single one, been attacked by group as well. and came out pretty good every time and to be honest with you it's pretty weird the way that the Tai Chi worked for me it's pretty weird because I don't even know how I survived those attacks the more that I thought about it or found myself thinking about it why while it was taking place I noticed that my thoughts began to getting the what get in the way of what was being done when I wasn't thinking and I was just letting the Tai Chi flow through me, I was allowing the Tai Chi to just flow through me. It was phenomenal. It was like, I'll just say this. I believe that Tai Chi at the highest levels, Tai Chi at the highest levels, you cannot see the application. This is my experience. When I was attacked, I couldn't even identify the application myself. The more I tried to identify and figure out what was going on, the application began to disappear. It began to go away. Because Tai Chi application does not come from a conscious level. It comes from subconscious level. Tai Chi is Chi. You're dealing with training the Chi. Chi does not work from a conscious level. Chi works from subconscious level. When you get the conscious in, inside, the chi starts to go away. Chi is very shy. Remember that. I've experienced all of this myself. This is the way that it worked for me. This is the way that it worked for me. That's why I play around with applications just so people can get an idea. Hey, Kayla. Kaylin. Yeah, we're finished here. We're just talking a little bit. I'm getting ready to get off of here. I got a private lesson coming up at 11. I got a private lesson coming up in 30 minutes, but just talking about Tai Chi application from a martial standpoint, 
from a self-defense standpoint. But I'll be honest with you, when they say that the true application cannot be seen, I believe that. It cannot be seen, not even by the person that is applying the application. It's, it's, you, have to, you have to experience it to know what it is. You have to experience it to understand it. And I have, and not that I'm at some high level. I believe, and actually I experienced it years ago. Years ago. Years ago. Now, I believe that even a brand new Tai Chi person can apply their Tai Chi and be fine if they abide by Tai Chi principles. So it doesn't take a really high skill level person to do it. But you have to apply and you have to abide by the rules and the principles and philosophy of Tai Chi. You can't misuse the art. That's for sure. So we'll see how, how it works out with this um, Tai Chi 360 project with, with me training these guys that want to go into the ring and, and use it that way. This will, this is a definitely a um, definitely an experience for me as well. Jeremy, you just turned 57. You make 57 look good, my brother. I had no idea that you were 57. Not that 57 is old or anything, but I just took for granted you were more like 47, 48 like me let me check out fam i'll charge up and um see you all for our um we got standing class today we got standing lesson at one and then we got we got our uh we got our tai chi flow at two so i'll see you all then i love you guys you gotta check out peace see you soon now